My brothers, I urge really myself and urge you to, to fear Allah. Always, brother, always fear Allah wherever you are. And remember, my brothers, that Allah is listening to you, watching you. Don't fear people. We suppose really to respect Allah and honor Allah by implementing His command and avoiding His don'ts. I pray to Allah with His good names that we reach Ramadan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran concerning fearing Allah. يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبت منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءل به رحام إن الله كان عليكم رحم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز هو العالم my brothers, you're all aware that next Monday, insha'Allah, will be the first day of Ramadan. 
So the question, are we aware about all matters concerning Ramadan? I will try to cover in this short khutbah when was Ramadan implemented on us? When was Ramadan was prescribed upon us? And the second, who should fast? Third, when shall we fast? And when shall we break our fast? Fourth, what is the meaning of fasting? Fifth, who can break his fast? And who shouldn't fast? I'll try, inshallah, in this khutbah to cover as much as I can. So let's start when fasting is prescribed upon us. On, in the second year of Hijrah, that's mean after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam immigrated from Mecca, on the second year when he was in Medina, Allah had revealed to him, as it was mentioned in Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 183. <coughs> you can, you know, go and check that. In Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 183, Allah said, Allah revealed a verse by Gabriel to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This verse said, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, kutiba alaykum usiyamu, kama kutiba al ladheena min qablikum, la'allakum tattakoon. O you believe, fasting is prescribed upon you as it was prescribed on the people ahead of you or the people, you know, the previous people, or the people came before you, to make very simple meaning. So this verse was revealed to Muhammad Sallallahu on the second year of immigration, the second year of Hijrah. After he spent second year in, Ma in Medina, after he left Mecca, Allah. So in Mecca, there was no fasting. There was Salah only. But after Rasulullah immigrated from Mecca to Medina, on the second year, Allah gave him this verse. And the second, this is the first evident that we must fast. The second evident come from Sunnah, from the words of Muhammad himself. Rasulullah he said, Islam is built on five pillars. Bunyan Islam, ala khamsa, on five. First one is Shahadat wa Allah illallah wa anna Muhammad Rasulullah, as you all are aware. Second is Salah. Third is Zakah. Fourth is Ramadan, Sawm, fasting Ramadan. And fifth is, this is the second evidence which that clear, very good, make it very clear to us that we must fast. Because it's the fourth pillar of Islam. Now, who should fast? Who really must fast? Every Muslim say reached the age of puberty and also able for condition require a Muslim, a person to be fast, to fast Ramadan. First, he must be a Muslim. The kafir, the disbeliever, whatever he does, even if he fasts day and night, it will not be acceptable. Because one of the most important conditions for fasting is to be Muslim. First Muslim reached the age of puberty. For the male, either he saw wet dream or reached the age of 15 years old or he had seen the hair, the pubic hair and the underarm hair. So there is three signs which, you know, clear to us and clear to the person that he reached the age of puberty. Either he reached the age of 15 or he saw a wood tree, wood tree, that means he ejaculated while he's sleeping. He saw a dream that he are making sexual intercourse. 
and he when he woke up he found the sperm you know the ejaculate sperm okay or or he have seen or the hair or pubic hair is there over and up once one of these or not it's not supposed to be all together once he see one of these he must fast now the question is it possible for me as a father to adopt my children even if they did not reach the age of puberty can I ask them to fast seven years old nine years old yes but don't force them you can encourage them you can invite them you can give them some present to train them to fast so when they reach at least have a day if they can if they can the whole day that's much better but are they seven years eight years nine years 12 years must fast no you cannot force them because allah said the islam give condition for the one who fast when he reached the age of puberty and i told i said how he reached for the lady when can we see that lady or a, a girl not a lady but a girl when a girl reached the age of puberty once she has the period menstruation that's me she reached the age of puberty not 15 for some ladies sometimes some girls may have the period or the menstruation when she's 13 some of them no maybe last until 16 so once the, the girl you know have the menstruation the period the monthly period then this is the sign that she reached the age of puberty and then she must fast but of course she has to be clean so for the lady or for the girl we can say muslim sane and reach the age of purity and clean she cannot fast when she's not clean same thing for the lady who have delivered the baby or she has menstruation she must not fast until she are clean number five when must abstain from food and drink in other words when shall we start fasting we must abstain stop eating drinking sexual intercourse with your wives from fajr until sunset this is the time of fasting from the time you hear adhan or if you are in the desert or in a place there is no adhan once you see the first light of Fajr, you should stop. When you can break your fast, when the sun set. Because Rasulullah sallam was asked, when the fasting person can break his fast, Rasulullah sallam answered immediately, said, when the sun sets. So it doesn't have to have Adhan. If you are in a place and there is no Adhan, nobody called for Salah, you can use your vision and you see in the sunset, you just eat. And by the way, one of the sunnah of Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that you should don't ever delay breaking fast. You can delay sahur. This is a sunnah. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Allah is blessing his slaves as long as they are, you know, getting early in fasting and being late for sahur. Is the sunnah once you hear the adhan immediately break your fast don't delay it. and once you hear the adhan fajr stop eating at all don't continue if you intentionally you drink you drink water or eat food while the adhan is going intentionally you have to compensate you have to make up that day you continue fasting but it's not acceptable for you you have to make it up so don't say, oh no, it's just Adhan now. So I still have time. No. Once the Adhan, stop. Immediately. 
this show us, my brothers, there is no religion in the whole world are respecting time like Islam. Though, unfortunately, the most people wasting time is Muslim. Unfortunately. Islam is the only religion that respect time. Our Salah in certain time. Our Jum'ah in certain time. Our Hajj in certain time. Our Zakah in certain time. Though, unfortunately, Islam respect, there is no punctuality. No punctuality in any religion except Islam. Though, most of the people who are wasting time not respecting time are Muslims. I feel sorry for that. Go to Europe, to America, when he say, I, sh I will be there at 6 o'clock, coming to you, he will come 5 minutes to 6. In Muslim country, he said, I come to you at 6 o'clock, he come at 10 o'clock. So this is, I'm just seizing the chance of this, that we should respect time. Now, my brother, one more thing. I would like to remind myself and remind you. There is no month, really, Muslim waste food like Ramadan. A lot of food is wasting Ramadan. From the first of Shaban, people are running to supermarket and hyper places to, for shopping, for grocery, shopping in Ramadan, grocery. It shows like we're going to have war. Shoot, really, when you see the people in the supermarket, how come they are rushing, running, uh, racing each other uh, with trolleys? What's going on? This is what? A war will take place? The food will finish? But what happened? And the end, after Isha, after Taraweeh, you go to the garbage in the street and you find piles of food. So I work not. I am really seizing the chance now to remind myself and to remind you, be careful of wasting food. Israf. When too extreme in spending food. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Wa kulu wa shrabu wa la tusrifu inna hu la muslim. Eat and drink. But don't went too extreme in wasting food. Because Allah does not like those people. So be careful that you don't become one of those people who Allah doesn't like. This is a reminder. And also, during Ramadan, brother, what is the meaning of fasting? We know, I just explained to you, fasting is to abstain from food and drink and sexual intercourse during daytime. Is this, is, the, this is, is this is the only meaning of fasting? Is it mean that I only stop all what God, Allah, all what Allah wants from me is to stop eating, drinking and sexual intercourse during daytime. That's it. This is the meaning of fasting? No problem. This is not the only meaning of fasting. Ramadan, my brothers, is nothing more than training course. Annual training course for us. It's annual training course, free course. You don't pay money for that. Right? It's annual training course to train us, to adapt us to be better Muslim. To teach us patient to remind us about our the needy, the poor. To remind you of your brother and sister who are starving the whole year. If you only starve or feel hungry only during Ramadan, remember my brother, there are some brothers and sisters, millions of brothers and sisters all over the world, they are starving the whole year. And Ramadan is to remind you. The second wisdom behind this, is also to give a break to the stomach. The stomach is working three times, minimum three times. 
And unfortunately, there are some people, their stomach working five times a day, maybe six times a day. They never stop eating, the whole day they eat. So it's a good chance for the stomach to relax and to take a break 12 hours between, at least 12 hours a day, to take a break to be stronger, to remind you in the meeting, to remind you, to remember, to also to give you, to remind you to be, you know, generous with your brothers and sisters. So fasting is not to your organs, the whole thing in your body must fast during Ramadan. Your eyes must fast from looking to bad things, to haram. Your ears must fast not to listen to haram. Your nose must fast from sniffing bad or haram. Your tongue must fast from talking or, you know, false talk, backbiting, telltales, you know. slandering, abusing, shouting on other people. Your time must fast. Your hand must fast from taking things not belong to you, from stealing, from priming. Your foot must fast from walking to places on haram. So in general, my brother, fasting is not only just abstaining from food and drink and sexual intercourse, as many Muslims believe, because there are many Muslims believe, oh, no problem, I can stop fasting from, from Fajr until Maghrib, from food and drink. But his eyes is looking to everything he wants. His ears is hearing everything. Oh, some of them said, no, during the time I will fast, but at night I will do whatever I want. You have spoiled, you have demolished, you have destroyed what you do in the daytime. If you want to do whatever you want at night, you have destroyed you should really be a good Muslim, be righteous, be pious during Ramadan. If you do this, you will be inshallah, even after Ramadan, pious and righteous. Aqulu ma tasmanun wa astaghfirullah wa alayhi wa astaghfirullah. الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما ينبغي لوجه ربنا وعظيم سلطانه وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على آل محمد وعلى آل My brothers one also the wisdom behind fasting is to test us Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Are we obeying him or not? Remember brother, the only worship, the only ibadah, that is the only ibadah which is secret between you and Allah is fasting. When you pray, everybody can see you. When you pray the masjid, everybody can see you. When you give zakah, at least the people who are you are giving zakah, they see you. Maybe you don't want to buddy and they see you, but you want to be, you know, really a humble person. I don't want everybody to know about my zakah. But at least the person who take your zakah have seen you. If the people don't see you. Or when you go to Hajj, everybody can see you. The only ibadah that is the secret between you and Allah is fasting. Because I could see you, I could see you at daytime Ramadan. How do I know that you are fasting or not? Unless you drink or smoke or do something. But if you don't, then I think you are fasting. Maybe you are not. Maybe you have, have taken food at your home or in your car. So the only secret ibadah between you and Allah is fasting. Nobody knows about you, you are fasting or not, except Allah. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said all the deeds of mankind, all the deeds of mankind are belong to him. Except fasting, Allah said, is my enemy. 
Allah said, except fasting is mine. And Allah said, I will reward him for that. Everything you do is for you, except fasting. Doesn't mean for you that when he doesn't reward you, no. Just they say he have picked up and make fasting special ibadah. So do I? Because it is the only secret between you and Allah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you special reward for fasting. Also, brother, remember Hadith Rasulullah Man sama Ramadan Iman al Wahtisan Whoever fast Ramadan with a real belief from his bottom of his heart, sincerely for the sake of Allah, sincerely for the sake of Allah, Allah will forgive you all previous sin. Allah Rasulullah said, whoever fasts Ramadan sincerely for the sake of Allah, Allah will forgive him all his previous sins. Also Rasulullah said, Man qama Ramadan, iman al muhtisab. Whoever stood in Salah during Ramadan out of his faith and only solely for the sake of Allah, all his previous sins will also Forgive. Man qama Laylatul Qadr. Also, the Prophet said, Whoever stood during Laylatul Qadr, I pray to Allah that none of us will miss it, inshallah. Ameen. Inshallah, we all stand, inshallah, for Laylatul Qadr. Whoever stood for Laylatul Qadr, all his previous sins will be also erased or forgiven. So, remember my mother, also during Ramadan. During Ramadan, don't be lazy. Some Muslim, from the first week of Ramadan, he will not miss any salah. You will see the masajid, the whole mosques, and I will say masajid, I hate the word mosque. I always say masajid. You will see the masajid in Ramadan, the first day, the second day, the third day, maybe the fourth, maybe the fifth, are full. You come on the seventh day or next week and the rose is getting less and less and less. Don't be one of those people who are missing salah. When Ramadan starts, Muslims are very initiative. They are really taking care and they are coming to the masjid maybe before Adan. Isha. After Taraweeh and then second week, you know, will maybe be six rose or seven rose. Before one week, the first week was full. Don't be one of them. Continue. وَعَبُدْ رَبَّكَ حَتَّى يَأْتِيَكَ الْيَقِينَ Worship Allah until death. Until death come to you. Don't be lazy. Don't, you know, relax, you know, just hesitate. Don't leave Taraweeh if you don't have a job. If you really don't have real, you know, job at 9 o'clock, don't leave masjid until you finish taraweeh. Don't take me wrong. I'm not saying obligatory. Taraweeh is not obligatory. It is sunnah. But don't miss that khair, this blessing of Allah. If you don't have a job to do, 9 o'clock or 9.30, don't leave masjid. If you have a job, no, go make your job. Of course. If you have a job to work, you are working at 9 o'clock, after Isha, take 2, 3, 4 rak'ah taraweeh and go to your job. Because your job is more important than sunnah. But if you don't have a job to do after 9 o'clock, don't leave and the Imam is finished. Don't miss this khair. And also don't miss Umrah, brother, during Ramadan. Umrah in Ramadan, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, equal to exactly like you are performing Hajj with me. Umrah in Ramadan, ta'adilu Hajjat al-Ma'i. Rasulullah said, you perform Umrah in Ramadan equal from, of course, in the reward only. Right? Equal like if you have made Hajj with Rasulullah The reward. Doesn't mean that mean you made Hajj, khalas, no more Hajj, no. Only the reward. Also, remember, brother, if you can share in giving iftar sign, you know, make a budget from now. You know, 100 riyal, 200 riyal, 
300 yards, 1,000 yards if you can, tell yourself this is only for Iftar sign, inshallah, in Ramadan. Our brothers who are cleaning our street, may Allah reward them. If you can afford to buy two or three or four ihram, then give it to them, hadiyah. When he goes to ihram, umrah, you will be exactly sharing his, like you, you will be rewarded like him, like you have made on him. Give him ihram. Buy some mas'haf, buy some Quran, put in the masjid. Buy some zamzam, put in the masjid. Visit your relative, especially father and mother, brother and sister, aunt, you know, cousin, you know, nephew, nieces, your cousins. Remember that. Solve the problem between any brother. If you, if we don't, you know, tolerate, if we don't tolerate and forgive whoever have, you know, accused us or slandered us or backbite us or anything, if we don't forgive each other in Ramadan, then when? Especially your family, friends, co-workers, be good in Ramadan, forget about shaitan, Forgive everybody in Ramadan. Call him, say, I apologize, I am sorry. We are brothers, please forgive me. I have slandered you, I have abused you, I have whatever you did to him, say, I'm sorry. If you have money for him, give it to him. If you have taken something, call, take your things here. We have to forgive this peace in Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reach us and give us life and tribulation. Allahumma balagha Ramadan. وعنا فيه على الصيام والقيام وصاحب الأعمال اللهم حبب إلينا الإيمان وزينه في قلوبنا وكره إلى الكفر والرسوق والعصيان يا رب العالمين اللهم اهدي شبابنا اللهم اهدي بناتنا حبب إليهم الإيمان وزينه في قلوبهم كره إلى الكفر والرسوق والعصيان اللهم يا ربنا عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم انصر المجاهدين في سبيلك في كل مكان اللهم انصر إخوانا المظلومين المهجرين المحاصرين يا رب في سوريا وفي فلسطين وفي العراق وفي اليمن وفي كل مكان يا رب العالمين اللهم فرج همهم ونفس كربهم اللهم تقبل موتاهم للشهداء اللهم ارحم موتاهم اللهم اكسي عليهم واطعم جائعهم احمل حافيهم اللهم اجمع شملهم ونم شعتهم اللهم عندهم لبلاد المسالمين الغالبين يا رب العالمين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وآخر دعوانا الحمد لله العالمين وأقيم الصلاة